my question to you will also be addressed to the interim French language services commissioner. I know that you often study files that talk about francophones in Ontario, and I want to talk about the francophone services strategy, a three-year agreement of a law that received royal assent in 2021. One of the objectives of the law is to provide more personnel and to provide more service deliveries, as well as provide more virtual care. How is Ontario doing when it comes to these small projects? Are they dead in the water or are they moving forward? Well, that question has been answered, uh, has been asked to by me during pre budget consultations. Unfortunately, we did not hear anything from the Francophone community about this. From what I understood, there are some more funds for La Cité Collégiale, but I cannot provide a better answer. Well, I will ask this question to the next person who will be here. I want to talk about long-term care. Here in Ottawa, I believe there are two centers that are designated as centers that provide French language services. There might be three, but I know there aren't a whole lot of them in Ontario. But the Francophone people are not guaranteed spaces there. For example, a few years ago, my father found himself at the Malfa residence. He was very well treated, but I was told that it was not guaranteed he would be he would reside in such a place. Can you talk about what has been done to protect francophone spaces? You also mentioned the existence of five designated francophone hospitals. I want to hear about whether they can assure services towards francophones, or rather, is there a lack of guarantee? So to answer your first question about long-term health care, you talked about the guaranteeing of services. Currently, no service is guaranteed, even less so after the adoption of Bill 7 in Ontario, which wants to provide rapid transfers between hospitals and long-term cares. We saw beds that were reserved for francophone patients that were quickly filled by anglophone patients. However, the long-term care home system is filled and we are waiting for spaces to free up before we can bring in another patient. We could think about a case in Toronto where one long-term care center has over 30 designated beds for francophones. However, 40 of them are 40 percent of them are occupied by anglophone patients, and it can take several years before these beds are serving a francophone patient again. That is the case across Ontario. Through Bill Seven, the government can transfer without considering the language requirements of the establishment and to send patients from one area to the other. This is a huge loss for the francophone community. It is not about protection right now. It is unfortunately about erosion. It seems like it's a common thread in this government when it comes to services to francophones. Maybe I should not be saying this publicly, but I will allow myself to do so. I'd like to add that we have internal documents and recommendations that were shared with you we suggested tools that the government to use in order to provide more resources to francophone communities. When it comes to francophone hospitals, their ability to keep offering services in French is directly associated with the availability of francophone human resources. Earlier today, I said that there are 2,500 vacant 
nursing positions or that may be occupied by anglophone nurses. That definitely harms uh, providing French services in these spaces. Even in hospitals such as the Hearst or the Montfort Hospital or the Sturgeon Falls Hospital, which are hospitals that are designated as francophone hospitals by and for francophones with a French governance system, there are still a lot of nurses who are from agencies, and these nurses cannot work in French or work bilingually. So once again, there is a situation where English services are offered in francophone hospitals. And I often like to say that when we are sick, we are not bilingual. When we are sick, we prefer expressing ourselves in our language of choice. And there are studies that show that there is a direct correlation between the quality of the service received and health. I'm not sure if you want to add anything else. Well, since 2015, the AFO asked the government of Ontario to collect more data on language in healthcare. Without this kind of information, it will be hard for the government to, pr to make informed decisions. If they do not know that you're francophone, the government does not know that you need French services. It is one of the, the essential parts of providing French services in healthcare. Senator